an overview, actually, of this topic with highlighting specifically my focus, which was to extend the effective theory of cosmic gravity for objects which are also spinning, which is a realistic case uh, that we're all interested in. Uh, so today, I will try to give you an overview of, of, of the whole thing, and basically, in the coming lectures, I will try to go into the details Specific, um, each specific element. So the outline of the overview would be as follows. I would start by uh, by talking about the setup of the tower of the EFT. Like what is the general construction that we do here? Uh, what is the setup and go? What would be the reason for it to consider and what would be the symmetries that are very crucial to identify? Then I will uh, concentrate, I will, when I will talk about the Tower of EFTs, um, I will show you that actually from the three scales that we have in the problem, they correspond to three EFTs that we have to construct along the way. And therefore, um, and specifically in, in my line of research, I, I specified in the conservative sector where only actually two EFTs were needed uh, to get to the final result. And therefore, the second part of the problem is there also a light there? Yes. 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 Ah, so that's better. So which one can you make next slide? Ah, the upper one? Yeah, the one. The other one is like, oh, perfect. So, in the second part, I will talk about formulating the first EFT, which is the one part of the uh, where we want to formulate an EFT for a single compact object who is all, which is also spinning. Um, and that's not a trivial problem at all. <laughs> and at the next stage, um, I will specifically, I will focus on, I will try to highlight three facts. One is that we consider the world line spin as an addition of degree of freedom, and that's something that we should keep in mind. Um, the second thing is that uh, we restore the gauge freedom of the rotational variables, and that's, uh, that has been a source of ambiguity before we did our work, so um, that's like a new ingredient that we put in that enables us to connect different choices of the spin variable and the whatever one chooses to be the rotating, uh, vari the rotating variable. Uh, the third part would be about constructing the next EFT in the tower. The next EFT in the tower is the one that integrates out the orbital scale. Um, and therefore, this is like the two-particle EFT, where now we consider the two-particle to be a single composite object. So, in the second part, in the third part, sorry, in the third part here, I will focus on the technicalities of integrating out the orbital scale to get the two particle EFT. And here I would like to stress the fact that one should, one should disentangle the particle through the degrees of freedom, because when we want to integrate out the degrees of freedom, we should have them separated uh, from the particle degrees of freedom, but that's something that was not addressed properly before. Um, another thing I would like to highlight is just the technically beneficial uh, use of what we call the NRG fields, non relativistic gravitational fields, and related Schrodinger's language. And I would also like to highlight the, the ease with which we get the equations of motion of spin in the way we formulate um, our EFT. And finally, in the last part, I would like to give you a taste of what the actual implementation looks like, at least the final step of it, which uh, which which is about the second EFT, doing the second EFT here, namely actually computing Feynman diagrams. Uh, so I will show you uh, Feynman diagrams of different sectors where we actually obtain some new results that did not exist before, pretty. And I will also give you a preview of, um, of a code, a public code that we put out, um, its initial version, that uh, includes basically all the conservative sector with mass and spin to the fourth spin order, which is 
currently the state of the art, the highest precision that exists. Um, okay, so let's delve into it. Okay, just giving the a general background, which I you know most of you probably are familiar with, right? Because we heard about the original waves last week, right? Uh, so just to give this the worldwide status, um, predicted in 1916, the existence of gravitational radiation. First indirect evidence was by the Rosenthal Taylor pulsar, which indeed did like all the orbital parameters decayed, and for and for that they got the Nobel Prize. Um, and then we had finally after after more than a decade of operational LIGO and, and many, many decades of planning, we had in 2015 we had a direct direct detection by LIGO. Um, the worldwide uh, spread at the moment, uh, we have um, the ground-based detectors LIGO, GEO, and Virgo. LIGO is American. We have two detectors located in two opposite points of the US. Uh, the one that you see here is, sorry, the one that you see here is in the state of Washington, and here is the one in the, in the southeast in Louisiana. Um, and they are the ones who made the detection. We also have the GEO, the German, um, German British collaboration GEO uh, 600, which at the moment is not operating, but is supposed to be back at some point. Virgo is um, also the European French Italian collaboration uh, that already worked. Also, I should mention that all of these already started to work and had their first run from 2002 to about 2010, some of which even continued later. Virgo and the first run of all of them produced no detections, as you will know. Um, then, uh, at the next stage, then came the second generation ground base, the advanced detectors. Uh, the US advanced LIGO, which even like, accidentally got the first detection even before the first run probably started. Uh, so, the Virgo should have like was planned to join it in 2016, but it's actually late. Uh, so we are expecting that any time now it would join, uh, and finally we would have some reference point because we would like to have a network of detectors um, having detections in, in order to be able to locate sources better. Uh, so in 2017, sometime we expect Virgo to to, to join. Uh, now I was uh, yesterday I was told that the uh, Cadre is ready to join on in 2019. Um, Lego India was already authorized as it is supposed to join in 2024. And I don't know if you heard that also Lisa was selected uh, not a long time last month, not a long time ago, after decades of uh, being pushed and uh, tossed between NASA and Lisa, finally it was selected by Lisa and is expected to be. Um, okay, so we had finally rotational wave events as of 2015. At the moment, there are three events. Recently, there has been some uh, doubts. I don't know if you've heard about this. Yeah, so last month, there has been, there has been a paper uh, that questions the correlated noise that appeared in these detections, and all of them actually was uh, replied to and uh, like still there is ongoing correspondence regarding this but it seems that uh, this noise seems to be not a random one but actually uh, a noise that people now look for a physical reason so it, at the moment it seems that a doubt that these detections are real is dispelled uh, so we shouldn't worry we have these three detections already um, Important facts that should be noted about these detections is that they were all, first of all, all of them incorporate only black holes, which were expected to be the loudest source of signals. Uh, the surprise was that we found that nature has black holes that are heavier than what we expected. So we learned that there are black holes which are heavier, and like in astrophysics, there are currently no scenarios that know how to uh, explain the creation of, of this range of masses of black holes. So that's also an interesting question on its own that astrophysicists want to address and for which they are also interested to have 
more knowledge from us, people who provide theoretical waveform, in order to be able to trace better the, uh, the binary components, the components that make up the original binary before merge, before merger. Um, so these are the notable facts to, uh, to address. In the future, of course, we would be interested to, to find other compact objects like final, mixed binaries and neutron stars are called two neutron stars, but these are obviously expected to be weaker signals and we expect to learn much more physics about the physics that goes on in the neutron star, but at the moment black holes is a good focus and actually uh, this is like good to have in mind also when we do theory because specifically when we think of black holes we can simplify the analysis. Um, although we make an analysis which is generic, we, we we have in mind that basically the things that are going to be detected first are black holes, it makes uh, life a bit easier. Um, so, the binary is a promising source of traditional waves, and there are three phases in the life of a compact binary. Um, and we make this clear distinction between these three phases uh, of a spiral, merger, and ring down. And these are um, distinguished, okay, like we distinguish between the different phases. The, the in spiral phase basically ends when the distance between the components gets to the, to the order of magnitude of the last stable orbit of a black hole. So that's the way to think about it. And if one makes the corresponding evaluation, that would amount to, um, to the velocity of the individual components being about the order of 0.3 uh, velocity of light or a third of the velocity of light. So that's where we kind of uh, put the separation between the spiral post newtonian phase and getting into the strong gravity, getting into the merger phase. Um, then we have the, the violent merger and once we have a single object out of this we go immediately to the phase of the ring down where our single object relaxes uh, by quasi-normal uh, oscillations to a pair of black hole. And the reason it's very also useful to make this distinction between these three main stages of the, uh, in the life of the proper battery is that these three different stages are also treated with three different kinds of physics which are completely and the challenge is that we have to tackle each one of these phases in the, the most complete way that we could, but we also want to stitch them together because eventually we have a continuous signal that we want to describe. Um, and we have to make some sense of how to stitch these three different physics uh, together. Um, uh, the thing is that in general you probably know that the gravitational wave signal is very weak, uh, and therefore, it is covered by, unlike, for example, signals that we are familiar with in the context of particle physics, uh, in this case, for many years, that the noise surpasses the signal in many cases. Uh, in, like once the sensitivity got, got up, uh, the situation got better, but in general, the noise covers up the signal. That's why it makes it even more important to create uh, good theoretical way from templates that we can actually uh, extract from uh, the data that we that we, manage, that we can extract a pattern, a theoretical pattern uh, from all the noisy data that we measure. Um, the theoretical way from templates at the moment they are they are they have to be so exact um, that a phenomenological modeling of the waveforms and basically Phenomenological, all modeling is phenomenological. Um, and all, all of the modeling of the waveforms is, is done basically using the effective one body approach, which gives us some, some way, some sensible way to stitch these three stages that I mentioned here together. Um, they require, they have, they have um, parameters where they do the stitching between the different phases. And at the moment, they are using up to 6 pn order parameters uh, in order to have the, the, the waveform models. Uh, 
so at the moment we don't have any 6 p.m. Nothing is computed at 6 p.m. order. So basically, they just put in, they just put in things by hand to glue, uh, to glue the, to glue some way form that makes sense. But just to let you know, um, the, the order of, of accuracy that is taken into account that is actually not known at the moment. At the moment, the highest knowledge that we have in the end is for the end that's relatively new, and most of it is, is not yet incorporated into the gravitational waveforms. Uh, the gravitational waveforms at the moment incorporate up to 2 pm. Um, it could be that recently got up to 2.5 or 3, but definitely not more than that. Um, so, just to give you motivation uh, for why. Uh, why post newtonian gravity is important. Uh, what I didn't say yet is where does post newtonian gravity come in in these three different stages. So obviously, as you understood, it comes in in its prior phase where I talked about the fact that the velocity is still normal and um, So corresponding to the three stages that I mentioned before, we have the three different physics that describe uh, the different stages. So in the spiral phase, we we treat the physics, we can treat the physics analytically only with post newtonian theory. And this is important to stress because at this time and age, everyone is sure that 